Why aren't more people switching to Linux? Here's my honest opinion. Linux is a desktop operating system based on the Linux kernel. It's also commonly known as GNU slash Linux, pronounced GNU Linux. Linux is touted as being an excellent system because it is free and open source, meaning anyone can study, modify, and redistribute it. It also means that you can use it without having to pay for licenses or activation keys. Linux can also be a great way to make that older hardware usable again, as it's often reported to have better performance on the older hardware than Windows. Linux also comes with no bloatware, adware, spyware, etc., so it's a very clean system, and it comes in many so-called flavors, commonly referred to as distributions, or distros. However, Linux also faces some challenges, such as gaining more software and hardware support and the Linux community have not done a good enough job at making us all aware of the benefits of using Linux. So in today's video, I will explain to you why more people are not switching to Linux, and I will also cover some of the advantages and disadvantages to switching to Linux. Firstly, a huge chunk of PC users rely on software that simply is not natively available on Linux, despite there often being free and open source replacements or equivalents, which cannot always do what the proprietary software does. So this makes switching to Linux basically impossible for most people. Most people are not even aware that they are using Linux in their Android phones or tablets, or on a desktop OS like Chrome OS Flex, and they are not aware of its benefits, so how can you expect that everyone will all of a sudden switch to Linux without even educating them about it first? You can, and this is why a desktop market share for Linux has always been a measly 1-2%, to that recently changed over the last few months as Linux hit a 3% market share on desktop PCs, however, the growth is very slow, it constantly fluctuates, and even Chrome OS is getting more widespread adoption than Linux, thanks to its user-friendly interface and tight integration with Google's G Suite of services and applications. Another huge reason most people don't want to switch to Linux is due to the fact it has a steep and often challenging learning curve, which most people are not prepared to embark on, because this also means changing the software you use, and getting used to using a new system, change is not for everyone and not everyone is prepared for it. This is why Linux will never become the dominant OS used on desktops worldwide, you can expect it to continue to gain some newbies migrating from Windows or Mac OS, but that's about it. Aside from that, you won't really have the majority on Linux, and if someone does decide to switch, they first must learn what's necessary, the benefits and cons, as well as finding a bunch of free software to replace the proprietary paid-for software, which is not always possible. Linux also faces issues surrounding hardware support, generally not with older hardware, but with really new stuff like a really new GPU that does not have the appropriate drivers written for Linux. Some other components of hardware can also be incompatible with Linux, making switching to Linux virtually impossible for pretty much everyone except the tech-savvy people who can figure out how to get that stuff working. Linux also doesn't have enough of a market share for most software developers to rewrite their existing software for Linux. Take FL Studio for example made by Fruity Loops, this is specifically available on both Windows and Mac OS, and there will never be a version for Linux, because for one, it goes against the whole free and open source philosophy, and for two, not enough demand is coming from Linux users, and for three, it's not worth their time or effort to rewrite that software for about 2-3% to of people who are not on Windows or Mac OS, and this applies to pretty much every bit of business standard software you can think of. Linux also sucks when it comes to gaming as the majority of big name titles are not rewritten for Linux. And yeah, you might have tools like ProtonDB, which supposedly runs Windows games on Linux, but this can introduce latency and other issues, because most games are not natively available for Linux, and when running them through compatibility layers, this can be problematic, depending on the specific game you're running, how well it's rated to run through Proton, and any known bugs or issues that might plague it. Now, this is not to say that you cannot use Linux for gaming, you can. 100%, but you will be limited to Linux native titles, which let's face it, are not the titles most people want to play, and you can give ProtonDB a try and run Windows only games through that, but with many issues hurting it, such as anti-cheat, and not all the games run perfectly through Proton, that's to be expected, however, most of you will be disappointed that your beloved game either does not work on Linux natively, or it runs through ProtonDB or another compatible layer which makes the game unplayable or the latency is so great you might as well not bother, so there is a huge problem that also plagues Linux. Another problem that haunts Linux is that not enough is known about it, and the Linux community have not done a good enough job at letting the majority of people know about its benefits, and why switching to Linux could be a good thing, 
and this does not help with the situation, and the thing is, most people do not want to learn something new, they will stick with what they know, and if they do switch from Windows or Mac OS, they will almost certainly not be switching to Linux due to the complexity, learning curve, lack of software and hardware support, etc., you're more likely to see Chrome OS Flex become a popular alternative thanks to its intuitive user interface, the vast array of applications and services tied to Google, etc., and this makes it a very convenient solution for those who regularly use G Suite services or applications. Like Linux however, Chrome OS suffers from lack of software support from major software developers, and you cannot set up Chrome OS Flex with another system such as Windows or Linux, so this can be annoying and frustrating for users who want access to another system, because some Linux software will not work on Chrome OS, take VirtualBox for example, this only works on Linux because the Linux version has the appropriate kernel support needed to run VMs, I have tried this before on Chrome OS, and VirtualBox fails to run any VM regardless of the system I was trying to use, so this also haunts Chrome OS, and Chrome OS is not the most appealing OS for everyone, as it is beholden to Google, which as we know are not friendly with your online privacy, so Chrome OS is also home to some issues and they too plague its growth, however, it is a far better alternative for most people, because it's easy to use, like Windows, and it's free, so those with older or less powerful hardware can revive it with Chrome OS Flex. I will cover Chrome OS Flex more in depth in a future video. The majority of people are not switching to Linux, simply because too many problems exist surrounding it, such as major lack of software and hardware support, the learning curve, lack of games for gamers, and the fact that it's just too hard for most people is off-putting to say the least, which is why most people will not want to switch to Linux, and despite all this preaching to the converted and converting, there is only so much that will do for you. You cannot tell everyone to switch to Linux and expect that that's going to happen, like, you can lead a horse to water, but if the horse is not thirsty, it is not going to drink it, and that's the same for telling people to switch to Linux, you can lead people to an island full of water, but if they are not thirsty, they cannot and will not drink it. The Linux community also needs to do a better job of helping us become aware of the benefits and downsides of using Linux. They also need to be more accurate with troubleshooting issues, so that new users do not have frustrating times resolving hardware issues. I will now draw things to a close. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you next video. Bye for now.